today was a work day, and I uh, just want to take the opportunity to thank the following folks for coming out. Uh, Lorraine Williams, uh, Lori Strell, uh, who's uh, a first-time uh, visitor with us on work day, so thank you very much, Lori. Um, Julie and Dave Simons, Ken Westerland, Derek Catlin, uh, John Amin, Patrick Mitchell, and Miak Buchanan. And uh, Miak, uh, Patrick, and John, you know, were working on the uh, setup back there yesterday, so pretty impressive. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, David McElroy with Men's uh, Support Group. Uh, we're meeting uh, live for the first time next week on the 25th here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for those of you who do not want to come live, we will be Zooming it uh, as well. And, uh, and then we'll uh, make some decisions about whether we're going to do every two weeks or every month. So next uh, Monday, the 25th. Thank you. Uh, sorry. 7 p.m. Potluck. Potluck. Bring your food, Roy. <laughs> A question on that, Dave. Yes, sir. For the potluck, is, uh, is, would it be more appropriate for all of us each to bring their own meal and not to share their meal? Because uh, yes, that'd be. Thank you, Barry. That's a good idea. If you could, yeah, bring your own food, um, and you can bring food from me. But other than that, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Barry. So, yeah, we'll, do we'll start out that way, to bring our own food, and then once COVID ends in 2025 or whatever it is, uh, hopefully before then. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Okay, so, yeah. Thank you, Barry. Appreciate it. Opening words. This is uh, a little bit of a different presentation this morning, and so I tried to adapt this in the opening words. As we transition from childhood to young adulthood, we often find ourselves participating in a game that we really don't know how to play. <laughs> and as we complete the passage from adulthood to retirement, how do we respond to life's opportunities? How do we seek them out? If we are still growing, not retreating into self-pity or depression, the heart expands, love finds many avenues, and we enjoy being loved for who we are and who we have become as a person. This can be a period of grace and generosity. This will build the land is by Carolyn McDade and Barbara Zanotti at the First Unitarian Church of Baltimore.
for the lighting of the chalice. And for those of us, let's join together with the affirmation, those points that are so important to all of us. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its gift. This is our great government. We dwell together in peace to seek truth and love and to help one another. So uh, good, again, to see everyone here and to see those of you who are virtual and watching. Any idea how many that might be this morning? No. Not yet. Can't tell yet. Okay. Um, as many of you are aware, we have a, a real variety in our presentations, and so we invite everyone to uh, come back on more than one time. And we now, uh, that we've called Reverend Tracy Barrett, uh, to accept a position as part-time minister, UUUF, we now have that opportunity to have the lay-led presentation and also to have uh, minister-led services. So uh, we have a little bit of everything for everyone, and we hope that uh, uh, you can attend both. For joys and concerns, now is the time we share those joys that impact us deeply and also those concerns that uh, we may wish to talk to others about. I invite anyone who has a joy or a concern to uh, come forward and uh, you may remove your mask at that time and, uh, and address, address us. I have the great pleasure of going up to Niceville this week to hold my grand, twin grandbabies for a whole week. <laughs> uh, she's out with the um, group outside. Uh, Chloe McElroy just turned 30 on Saturday. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Hello. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So... Some of you may know my a wild child. He's this tall and absolutely out of control. And my joy is that he is starting school tomorrow. <laughs> so our daughter Sophia will be 16 on Wednesday. And I don't know how that happened. But that's my joy. And my other joy is that COVID is dying down and I actually like my job again. <laughs> And so now, a time for all ages. And this will be uh, provided to us by uh, our Director of Religious Education, Judith. And I think this is coming via a uh, video. In keeping with Barry's theme this morning, we're going to hear some, from a few of the younger folks among us. Thank you very much to Joey Cole, who came up with this idea, did the coordinating of the younger folks and some of the filming. This photo was taken here at Triple U in our youth group room, March 8th, 2020. On March 11th, 2020, all the leadership of all UUA congregations, including Triple U, received an email with a link to this article. Hello. Aiden, what transition did you have recently? I transitioned from, mid, from elementary school to middle school. How was that transition? Was it difficult? 
No, it was actually fairly easy since I ended up being with most of the same people in, and I'm in the same school and I have the same teachers. So it's fairly easy for me. Okay. What transition might you be looking forward to in the future? I don't really know. Okay, that's fine. Thank you for doing this. Hi, I'm Grace Carr. I recently transitioned from middle school to high school. And I have to say one of the biggest challenges I've had to deal with is just the amount of work um, and just like after school activities, it's very demanding. Um, but on a positive note, it's been really nice to connect with people older than me um, because you they can give you better advice and things like that. Uh, but yeah. This photo was taken September 19th, 2021. While we have been back on the property most of the summer, clearly there have been changes here, as our pictures will attest. I am pretty sure that there are changes in how our younger folks also manage their lives and their classes, at least changes as important as their jump from one significant level of school to another. Isn't it good to hear that uh, some of those changes and passages of their lives are about going forward and not just about being stuck? And so for our interlude and offering, uh, are we sharing the plate with Habitat? As yes. All right. So uh, that was a great program we saw in Habitat, and uh, that's something we really should make a contribution to uh, today. So during the interlude, uh, we need the basket. Uh, okay. In 1976, the writer, journalist, Gail Sheehy wrote Passages. It was an immediate bestseller. She did interviews with people mostly in New York City, over 100,000, 100, 100, I think. And, uh, and it, and it uh, sold like wildfire. She followed that up later with other books some that were devoted to a later period of passages in our lives. And we'll pause for a moment for our interlude and offering at this time. You can uh, deliver your offering uh, over here. We have the basket. Do we have any music for our interlude period? Good. The day was going down slow I'd like a river beginning to flow I felt the beat of my mind Go drifting into time and passages Years go falling in the fading light Time passages Buy me a ticket on the last train Just now and then my line gets cast into 
these time passages There's something back there that you left behind Time passages Buy me a ticket on the last train home tonight Feel yourself starting to turn Don't know why you should feel That there's something to learn It's just a game that you play John Mowbray, Larry, and uh, Paula. As I said, the book was an immediate bestseller. While that book focused on how we transition into young adulthood, later books by Sheehy delved into later periods of our lives, including a passage that is now growing importance. And perhaps we can focus on this at a later time, caregiving, which she, he writes, may start as early as the mid-40s for all of us, or many of us. Today, three members of our congregation will share with us transitions that occurred and new skills earned to adopt to changes in their lives. The first two speakers, Janet Levins and David McElroy, will talk about early adulthood, and Roberta Lerman will talk about transitioning into the retirement years. Janet? Thank you. Thank you, Barry, for this opportunity for all of us um, to share important moments, important passages in our lives. Um, I'm going to tell you about a pivotal moment in my mid-twenties. But first, a little background. I grew up in a very observant Lutheran family. My sister and I were required to attend basically every service that my church offered. But that was fine with me. I loved the music, the spirituality, the sense of community, and I also wanted to learn how to be a good person. However, I eventually started having some questions. How could Christians in general, much less one particular sect of Christianity, claim unique access to divine truth? There are obviously good people in other religions. Why wouldn't they go to heaven? Or why does God let bad things happen to good people? My father, our family's resident theologian, tried to help me out. Shh, he said, don't tell your mother but there is just one God, and different religions are but different pathways to the same God. 
war. It's obvious why God lets bad things happen. If there were no evil, how could we know the good, since evil and good are logically intertwined? Well, I wasn't entirely convinced. I also had a big problem with prayer. I had been taught early on that you don't pray to get what you want. God isn't Santa, after all. Instead, you pray to develop a relationship with God, to align yourself with his purpose, 